Avonlea's greatest strength is its universal appeal. The show was voted the most popular television program by Canadian viewers for three consecutive seasons, and numerous television polls have shown us that it has the highest awareness level of any Canadian drama on television today. The ambience, the strong visual quality, the way the production itself is executed, fit together cohesively to create a completely believable world built on stories of the human condition that, in a funny way, are an antidote to the contemporary world we live in, and yet capture a wide multi-generational audience for this kind of programming. CBC Sunday Night Family Hour has developed a huge audience that has now become a cornerstone of the CBC's programming policy. Society longs to return to a time when life's pace was a little slower, when one could count on a neighbor's help in time of distress. These are the elements that lend sociological value to the production, making the show Canada's most important cultural export. In this upcoming season, Sarah is going to return home to Avonlea with Nanny Louisa. Lord, what, what's she doing here? Who promptly announces her decision to take Sarah on a world tour. Well, when you first brought her to Rose Cottage, she was an exceedingly spoiled child. I beg your pardon? My life is already planned out in their minds. Sarah, you've got to tell the truth. If you're not careful, you're going to drive her to desperate action. If I don't do something now, I'll never have my own life. You had better put aside your own feelings and come to a compromise with that woman. You forced me to choose between you, and I can't. No, dear, never. Aunt Hetty had planned to take Sarah on her own cross-country Canadian trip. Sarah wants neither, and she has to find a way to tell them her dream before it's too late. You're the most important person in the world to me. Felicity and Gus meet up unexpectedly in Halifax while Felicity is away at medical school. Together they discover a peculiar street woman called Eliza, who Gus believes to be his mother. Red roses. Ezekiel Crane. This is Eliza. You think I did wrong bringing Eliza here? Wait! Just don't, don't let them take me. We have no right to bother this poor woman. You gotta remember what happened. Where's my boy? I'm here now. Gus leaves Felicity to take his mother to the Caribbean to find out more about her dark past but not before promising to marry Felicity. These prolonged goodbyes are not in the best interest of the children. <coughs> Young Cecily King is quarantined at a New York sanitarium with tuberculosis. It's a death house. We have to believe that Cecily's gonna recover. She becomes increasingly pessimistic about her treatment. I promise I won't cough anymore. Cecily. Until she meets up with another young boy and they become close friends while getting into a series of troubles. This boy is gravely ill. Why didn't you inform me? Promise me you'll get better and get out of this dump. But you gotta promise you're gonna get better too. Oh, fire! Everybody up! Fire! They're supposed to cure us here. Tragically, however, the boy dies, but not before he makes Cecily promise to get well. The town of Avonlea is still in high spirits, though, as the White Sands Hotel plays host to a bachelor auction. Over here! Sold to Rachel Lynn! You try it, you little French rat, and you'll wish you'd never been born. Hetty King is unexpectedly matched with their business partner, Simon Tremaine. Bid on someone you like. So, what am I bid? What am I bid? Who? Give me a quarter for this. Simon Tremaine and Hetty King. Opposites attract. Clive Pettibone and Muriel Stacy begin to fall in love. Felix and Izzy have a budding romance, while Hetty and Simon are joined at the hip forever. I'm not afraid of anything. Rachel Lynn falls victim to a sudden stroke and is sent out west to recover with her son. She isn't going to live, is she? If Mrs. Lynn has any family, they should be instructed to get here as soon as possible. It's not your fault Mrs. Lynn had her stroke. Oh, don't give it another thought. I'll, I'll take care of them. I'll get better, and I'll come back to you. Davy and Dora are sent to live with Hetty King at Rose Cottage. But trouble erupts when Davy becomes increasingly rebellious. And poor Hetty has to struggle to find the root of his problem. She isn't getting better. It's a lie! I don't think that Lucy Maud Montgomery had any idea as she sat at her desk in a garret on Prince Edward Island at the turn of the century, penning out weekly installments of her books, that she was really creating a literary legacy that became the foundation for a global television franchise 
that's left Prince Edward Island etched indelibly in the minds of millions of viewers around the world.